Uh, well, uh, good morning or good afternoon. And uh, what I would like to do now is to introduce uh, one of my best friends and one of the most uh, brilliant scientists I have ever met, uh, Professor <laughs> De Barbata Data. He's going to talk about the new gen uh, generation of programming, uh, the future of the world, and in particular, uh, the metaverse. So I, I would like to acknowledge Professor Data for his kindness and, uh, and uh, friendship. He's always ready to help us and uh, his knowledge <clears throat> will, will be expressed for many, many people around the world. So Professor Data, you are more than welcome. Uh, once again, thank you very much to you and to your family for this opportunity. And I hope that we shall meet in uh, Calcutta very, very soon, Professor. So uh, please uh, go ahead and I'm going to mute so to avoid uh, noises from my side, okay? Oh, okay. Go ahead. Yeah. So uh, first of all, I would like to thank the, the Professor Roberto to give me this opportunity to describe some of the, the our future uh, uh, system or future computation or you can say that the future world so from that angle a lot of people are working towards this and a lot of social media are also working towards that so my presentation will be towards this conceptualizing that as a metaverse which will be shaping the future okay so let me uh, give my presentation outline into this form that we would like to explain um, concept of metaverse through a couple of slides. And then in this concept, uh, the artificial intelligence will play a big role. So we will explain that the, what is the role of AI in metaverse and as well as what is the role of big data in metaverse and then the role of blockchain technology in the metaverse. Then some of the, the metaverse devices already there are companies which we have devised and uh, then finally we'll conclude and we will see that why this metaverse is so important in the future. Though I have not put in the, the bullet form but it is an integration of lot of educational pattern it will change and not only that many of the, the, the functionalities also will change. So we will see that the, the there is a huge interaction between our brain and then computer. So what we call that the brain computer interface or some people call it as a human computer interface. So let me go through that the next slide. You will see that the, the, the slides are showing that the, the people are sitting in an auditorium for some conference and with their headset and they are observing something that means this headset is such a device where they can see the everything is in 3D space. That means if they are in the, the auditorium for attending some conference, the conference will be seen in the form of a 3D. Okay, so that means whatever we are observing in this today's generation, all are 2D. And whenever we are trying to move the 3D, we put some kind of glass on our uh, eye instead of glass, they are putting that there is some headset where some different world they will be able to connect it. You concept that the imagination that today we are browsing the internet, but browsing the internet is nothing but the 2D mode. But if we can browse the internet in a 3D mode, then what will happen? Okay. And also you think about that, if you would like to develop some social media for blind people, where they also can send their email among the people, similar kind of people. So therefore, all this concept will be looking or checking your uh, knowledge that we should develop something more for the, those people. Now, the first slide after that, it is giving you that the, what is basically a metaverse? If you look at that, you will see that the, the meta is uh, one particular word which brings that the, the Information on information. That means I am just nurturing some information. From that, I got some kind of another information which will be useful. 
if we have that kind of thing, we call that the meta. Similarly, verse is the short form of the universe. So if we can think about that this meta is looking at this universe, so then that concept will be called as a metaverse. So in short, metaverse is basically meta plus universe. That means one universe already we are existing. With that, another universe we are trying to create. That means universe is creating another universe and that is done through the, the metadata or meta analysis of the system. So we call them as a metaverse. If you look at the term metaverse was first created by Neil Stephenson in his science fiction novel named Snow Crash in 1992. Okay, so metaverse is basically a fully immersive hyperspatio-temporal. This is a conceptual computations and self-sustaining virtual shared space blending the ternary physical, human and digital world. Basically, we are trying to convert our physical world into digital world. So we can say that the metaverse is some kind of mapping from the physical world to the, the digital world. So we can say the how it is possible, the basically the concept of the metaverse or the, the definition of metaverse integrates that various technologies. One is virtual reality, augmented reality and extended reality and all this technology when will combine together, they will build a 3D internet browsing space, which I was just addressing previous slide. Okay. Again, continuing in that concept of metaverse, we can say that the, as we understood that the, there are three technology behind. One is virtual reality, augmented reality, and brain computer interfaces. So that means we are trying to everything see in the virtual mode. Today also we are seeing that the virtual mode because now at present we are giving that the online. So it is a virtual presentation. Even though you are not able to see physically, but you are realizing, I am also realizing that the Professor Robert is sitting there. Some of the participants are sitting around the globe so that virtual reality is possible. And similarly, in the virtual reality, we are packing with the augmented reality and brain computer interfaces. So this is a very loaded uh, sentence because whenever we are um, giving this term brain computer interface, what basically you are trying to do, you are learning something. So with the help of your brain, so if we can transfer this learning to another brain, so that means the brain to brain uh, interaction is taking place through some computer. So that means the learning uh, will be much more faster compared to that. Degree. Uh, today's learning. So the, obviously, uh, if we want to achieve that, artificial intelligence will play a major role uh, to form that metaverse. But it is cert certainly true that single or present days of artificial intelligence will not be able to cope up of this kind of conversion. What we need to do that artificial intelligence, we have to merge with the cognitive intelligence. And whenever we uh, combine artificial intelligence with cognitive intelligence, then we call that the artificial general intelligence. So future metaverse or when metaverse will shape the future, so ultimately we'll be dealing with the artificial general intelligence. So that means everything will be in the 3D mode. We'll show, we'll, I have some picture, we'll show you that. Then obviously when you do that, you can easily assume that there are huge amount of data will be present. So which you call that the big data. And as we know that the big data uh, by definition is uh, nothing but the, the five Bs. And these five Bs are volume of the, the data is very large and variety of the information you will be capturing at your end. So that is another V. Then the way or the rate at which the, the data will be receiving by the recipient is very large. So that is why another um, V, so that is velocity of the data. Then whenever you have the, the data, data may come from the, the various resources. So obviously you will be having some kind of uncertainty or noise present in those big data. So that is the veracity of the big data. And then obviously the data which will be processing for doing some good job, that is the value of the, the data. So we have the, the five Bs. One V will explain you that the large amount of data, 
second v will be giving you the, the velocity third v will be giving the, the variety fourth one it will give the, the uncertainty or velocity and fifth one will be explaining to you that the value of the data so all these big data that means all the five v's when we'll compile in one shot will be called as a big data these big data should be sustained which will be an issue of forming the, the metaverse you can see that the major technology companies, including the, the Apple, Google, Meta platforms, which is nothing but the, the Facebook and Microsoft, Ninantic and Valve are developing the technology, which will shape the future of the, the metaverse. That means these many companies, they are already working towards this uh, shaping of the, the future metaverse. So therefore, what you can say that the, the word metaverse has entered in a common usage but there remain different ways of conceptualizing and defining it. Because depending on your concept, depending on your algorithm, the metaverse will take a different shape. Coming to this, uh, this uh, timeline diagram, you can see that when you try to computing platforms over the time, we have the, the innovation trigger. Okay. So a lot of peak of inflated expectations we are having. This is the expectation. And here at the expectation is very, very large. And when we are trying to do that, we are just moving from here. You see, we are working the, the PC and then we move to the, the console. As the time proceeds, it is coming towards that. And then we have reached the, the mobile, depending on the time. And initially, it was coming to the, the brain computer interface so that we know that the neural network or neural technology. And then we have the, the augmented reality that is by specs, we can see the virtual reality, which will be giving you the, the headset. And then from that, it will be coming to the, the mobile console and then PC also will get. So this part that where BCI, AR and VR will take place, that will be called as the extended reality. And this is our Web3 technologies. Today, whatever the technology we have, that is Web 2.0, that means 2D mode. But when we go for the, the Web3, it is a 3D mode. So therefore, Metaverse will be completely um, bringing to the uh, Web3 technology. And these are the, the timeline diagram as per that. Okay. <clears throat> if you look at this figure, this is the digital world. Okay. And this is our digital life. In the digital life, we'll be having this kind of set. And here, this we have a virtual world number one. And in this case, we have a virtual world number two. And here, we can do some lot of activities for virtual world number three, like that. Lot of virtual world, depending on the, the activities we can generate. And these all these virtual worlds, they will be interconnected with some intelligence. Just wait for me. So our idea is that we are trying to give that in the virtual world. Um, you see that the, there are some digital opters. They will put some kind of content and then service. So that means from the virtual world, every virtual world will uh, develop some kind of opter which can do something. You can say they may be in the, the robot on the, the human form and when 3D robot in the human form will be developing, we call them as a humanoid. And they will behave simply just like an human, similar to the, the alien. And the virtual world too will be give that some kind of informatics. And uh, again, virtual world number three will be giving some kind of service. So all this kind of different, different virtual world will do some different activities. And they will be further interconnected by some uh, metaverse engine. And Metaverse engine always will be uh, compiled with the, the extended reality form, where augmented reality, virtual reality, and uh, your uh, modified reality will be coming. And then along with the, the BCI, will be coming to the, the interactivity. Of course, 
a uh, lot of sensor technology will be developed and transmission methodology, which will be cope up with that the artificial intelligence. We'll be having one 3D modeling, 3D simulation, data fusion, and digital twin. We can also have a, some kind of consensus because so many data will be there. So obviously, we'll be having some kind of cyber security, and that cyber security will be uh, rooted through that the consensus algorithm, proof of work, smart contact, and a lot of things under the realm of the, the blockchain technology. So then uh, all this will be considered as a big data as you are seeing that the lower part is the uh, big data. And so finally, the user end, it will be just connected. That means the human society will be connected through this kind of information structure where they will be not knowing where keep it, where they are keeping their data. No, in the computer today, we are having hard disk, but after some time, no computer will come with the hard disk. No computer will come with the uh, pen drive. So therefore, where you will keep the, the data, that is the greatest challenge of the, the metaverse. Okay. So we can say that the architecture of the metaverse in integration of the, the human, physical, and digital world. So it is self-sustaining, hyperspatio-temporal, and 3D immersive virtual shared space that will be created by the, the convergence of physically persistent virtual space and virtually enhance the physical reality. So that means at this end only we will be working, but we will never know that we will be mostly interacting with this interactivity. That means this kind of reality will be trying to picture by different gadgets and then information will be 100% secure because of this blockchain technology will play the big role here. So therefore, we can conceptualize that the metaverse, if you try to design, you require the seven layers. What are the layers? First is the, the infrastructure. In the infrastructure, you will be having an internet 5G. 6G has not yet reached so far, but we will be soon receiving the, the 6G technology, Wi-Fi, cloud, data center, central processing unit, and GPUs. So therefore, cloud engineers or cloud analytics will play a very big role uh, in case of the, the, the first layer of the, the metaverse. Second layer is that the human interface, which will bring that the mobile, smartwatch, smart glasses, wearable devices, mounted display, gestures, voice, and electrode bundle. Okay, so these are the, the very information to be captured by the human. Then decentralization, where we will be talking about the, the blockchain, where you see that you required to design a 3D engine, virtual reality, augmented reality extended reality and geospatial mapping and multitasking. From that only, today we are interested to develop many more projects or work toward the geospatial data modeling. Or we can say that the GDS, that the geospatial data science. Then we are trying to create that the economy, which will be giving you that the design tools, asset markets, e-commerce and workflow. You have the another layer of discovery where you are Advertising your networks, virtual stores, social curation, ratings, avatar, and chatbot. Today, you can design the, the chatbot. There are many kind of chat systems should be there. You can design a chat GPT also. And then you will be having the last layer of the experience where you can play the, the games, social activities, e-sports, shopping, festivals, events, learning, and working, so on. So these are the three uh, seven layers of the metaverse. So if one is interested to design the metaverse, he has to uh, design each and every layer. But of course, there are huge number of people will be present because each and every layer will be consisting of various kinds of tasks as I showed here. Pictorially, if you see, it looks like that. This is my infrastructure. I will maybe that the hardware part of that. Then I will be having that the human interface. And this human interface will be subsequent by the decentralization block, special computing, creator economy, discovery, and some kind of experience. So therefore, all these seven layers are available or will be formed in a concentric circle, having that the first layer is the infrastructure and say seventh layer is an experience. So therefore, what are the metaverse in practice we have? From the perspective of the human experience, we can develop the, the, our, all these things that is extended reality technology. So 
we can work towards this extended reality technology and using this we can think of how our teaching and learning or education pattern may change uh, because everywhere after the covid we have seen that the we are very much uh, faithful on the, the online training or online teaching so, so to in order to sustain those online uh, technique we really wanted to have the, the extended reality technology the present systems of online may not be sufficient after some time because many of the time we have received the complaint from the, the, the students community that they are not understanding or from the teacher community we have seen that the people are not students are not present they are just keeping their uh, on login and they may not be present uh, physically they may be doing some other job so all these things can be easily seen uh, when you apply the, the extended reality technology so therefore you can say that the this extended reality technology includes the, the virtual reality augmented reality and brain computer inference. this also i showed earlier so therefore these three concepts we have to model and then we have to put the hardware for each and every component and then if we connect we will get the, the metaverse and today's metaverse is nothing but the, the virtual reality as the digital scape so this you can remember that uh, at present people are working towards the metaverse but today's metaverse is virtual reality as the digital scape <clears throat> this is a metaverse marketing map i just picked up from the, the, the internet so these are the, the experience what we have these are my discovery that see facebook google and then various kind of app then different techniques are mentioned here these are the, the creator enemy economy special computing falls under this open ai google ai hmm. and there are many others then you have some the decentralization microsoft is working towards that as a blockchain ibm already have given a supply of the blockchain there are many other areas who are developing the, the decentralization technique human interface by oculus apple like xbox and then samsung so every companies are working finally we have the, the infrastructure like hardware which is nothing but the, your aws as i mentioned that the cloud is really very important so these are the things will be there okay so this is basically metaverse market map with the seven layers one two three four five six seven okay so now the question is that whatever we try to do we would like to have the idea of the, the virtual reality what is virtual reality that is focused on basically creating a digital sense of presence which many experts agree that will be key to the creating an attractive experience for example that the, we may having a near term metaverse where augmented reality will be to enhance the not replace the human experience that means human experience is not replacing fully but you will be getting the, the equivalent experience like a human in the computer if you have a long-term metaverse then obviously brain computer interfaces will play the role and that will be the final platform so now if you look at a general network architecture and key characteristics of the metaverse the metaverse will be having so many sub metaverse which will cause the virtual uh, world and they will be interconnected by a lot of uh, neural network technique or deep learning and then they will prepare that the, the a virtual world by different kinds of optar and this will be able to see by means of some kind of gadget or converting the, the human into this world so that means the physical human will be transforming himself by this device into this particular world and once he, he is in this he will be knowing the information from the, the various globe and so this globe already designed by different sensing control network communication uh, computation and storage so therefore the, the key characters of the metaverse will be that this is nothing but the immersiveness this is a hyper spatio temporality sustainability interoperability and this layer it will give you that the scalability and heterogeneity so this way a network architecture can be uh, developed for the future metaverse 
So obviously, we'll be having one Metaverse engine. So Metaverse engine will be used this big data. As you are seeing from the, the previous slide, a huge amount of information you have to process. So therefore, the Metaverse engine will be using this big data from the real world as it generates the, the maintain and update the virtual world via the various kind of process like interactivity, digital win, uh, and blockchain technology. And with the assistance of the, the XR, that is extended reality and human computer interface. Hmm, so we can uh, always develop some kind of various activities like as car racing, dating, and virtual item trading, and so on. Okay. Then we will have a digital twin. This is one kind of uh, application. So the digital twin represents the digital cloning of the objects and systems in the real world with high fidelity and consciousness. So therefore, we can develop some kind of humanoid system by using the, the by optimization and prediction the exact work by the uh, that particular system which we call as the humanoid that is human form of 3D robot. So obviously, then finally, if we try to achieve all these things, and which will be called as the shaping the future for the, the metaverse, artificial intelligence will play a big role. Okay, in which way artificial intelligence should be coming? As you are seeing, all the virtual world are interconnected. So obviously, a deep learning approach will be there, which is a subset of the, the artificial intelligence. So AI technology will be act as a brain of the, the metaverse. And then... AI will enable the smart interactions. Smart interaction means, for example, that the smart shopping guide and user movement prediction. How that the user will move from one particular to another particular. All these e-commerce activities will be developed between the user and the, the opter. And or you take that the opter or you take that the NPC, which is a non-player character, via the, the intelligent decision making. That means before reaching the shop, customer will be knowing that means uh, shopkeeper will be knowing that this customer is entering into my shop and he will be purchasing definitely for this. So his mindset and customer mindset will be prepared. They will be synchronized so that no customer once attempt to a particular shop will be returning back from that shop. So this is a very good achievement for the, the business purpose because many of the time you see that the customers come to the, the shop, they just see and then went back without purchasing anything. So such kind of thing will not be um, uh, appropriate in near future. Wherever will come, if I decide that the, I will purchase from that shop, I will be bound to purchase that because our brain set, our brain interaction will be prepared and the metaverse will play the role in the backbone. So definitely I will get the, the best shopping product or best shop product from that particular shop. So AI algorithms will create the, the vivid and personalized opters and intelligently recommend that interested goods, as I mentioned, or information to users in the metaverse. If you look at one example, since Facebook rebranded itself as a meta, okay, even though we are seeing Facebook, nowadays Facebook has changed his name as a meta. And this is announced by Mark Zuckerberg in October 2021, very recent. The marvelous concept regarding the new name has become a hot trend on social media and received the huge attention and much more discussions by various communities, including the academia and industry. So this particular attempt by the, the Facebook will be playing a role, big role in case of the, the metaverse development in near future. Okay. So the role of AI in the metaverse will be having in that the, by merging the, the AI with other technologies, other technologies, which are the other technologies such as augmented reality and virtual reality, blockchain and networking. So the metaverse will create a very much secure, scalable, realistic virtual worlds on a reliable platform. Okay, because whenever you try to interconnect it with one system to another system, reliability is uh, to be maintained and it should be optimal. So therefore, you may have a optimized design of the, the reliable source. Okay. So according to the seven layer of the metaverse platform, we can see that it is undoubted to realize the important role of AI to guarantee the reliability of the infrastructure and improve its performance. At various stages, a huge amount of reliability will be maintained. And not only the reliability, we will also have a lot of optimization techniques. 
This one timeline of the, the metaverse development involving primary events from 1992. And you see that the internet took place at 1991. And it came to immediately in the 1992, which he called the, the term metaverse in snow crash. Then proof of work that the blockchain component, it came to the 1993. In 1998, Bitcoin came, which is the B money so called. Then we developed the, the digital twins 2002. And from there, when we moved to the 2003, we have the, the online virtual world, that is the second life. Then from that 2006, that is four, five, six, we reached at the creative game, different kinds of game we developed. And 2009, again, Bitcoin reshaped. Blockchain technology 2009 came. Then 2011, we uh, developed the virtual reality novel, Ready the, the Player One. 2012, you have the, the NFT. Then 2014, you have the, the Oculus, which are the virtual hardware. Then 2015, we get the, the Ethereum, which is a blockchain technology Ethereum network. 2015, that the decentralized part of the, the blockchain we developed here. Then Pokemon Go, which is a game again, 2016. 2016, again, we get the, the decentralized autonomous organization. Then came to the, the for night 2017, which is nothing but the multiplayer game and a social hub. 2018, we have the, the Axie, which is a virtual game with training and trading creatures. 2021, Microsoft developed their mesh. And 2021, we have the, the meta platform. So this is the way that the, the metaverse development took place from 1991 to 2021. If you look at here, these are the, the metaverse technique. We have a neural interface. We have a natural language processing. We have some kind of machine vision, then blockchain technology, networking, and digital wind. Each and every component, we have their interface to develop the, the, the a metaverse technique. If you look at here, that is machine vision, you have the, the, the virtual reality, augmented reality, and mixed reality. So, this reality concept will be developed by machine vision. That means a computer system will be able to see and it will be able to understand. So therefore, if you wanted to do that, you require a lot of object detection and segmentation, image restoration and enhancement, pose estimation and action recognition. And with the help of that, we can do a lot of things in the uh, 3D mode. For example, if you'd like to see that the person, old aged person is falling, and you can develop a device by which you will get the information automatically nearby some helper or caregiver will reach there and it will help that person so that he will not fall. He will be protected by that caregiver. So such kind of thing we can develop as a social media with the help of the, the AI and ML algorithms and deep learning architectures always will be there. Now coming to the, the role of blockchain in the metaverse. Blockchain is required to uh, secure the, the data, which is required to be persistent that the metaverse should be constructed on a decentralized architecture to avoid the, the centralization risk, such as single proof of work, <coughs> low transparency control by a few entities. <coughs> so blockchain technologies offer an open and decentralized solution that we know for building the sustainable virtual economy. And what is blockchain basically? Now, blockchain is a distributed ledger because those who will be working towards that, they have to know that the fundamental concept of the, the blockchain technology. So blockchain technology is a distributed ledger in which the data is structured into a hash chain blocks and featured with decentralization, immutability and transparency and auditability. If you look at that, this is the real world economy. Okay, so this is my real world entity currency, manufacturing, entity, and then transaction and stock exchange. So this, all these things are coming under the real world economy. So this real world economy, getting the information to a secure data block, which is known as the blockchain, where they will be dealing with the hash and timestamp, distributed ledger, ledgers, non-fungible token, that is NFT, and smart contract, and then DFI, okay. Rather than Wi-Fi, you call it the DFI, Decentralized Fidelity Service. So then in the virtual world, 
we have the, the digital identity, virtual currency. So, so therefore, if you transfer from real world economy to virtual created economy, you have to pass through this layer, which is known as a blockchain technology. So that means blockchain technology will be connecting real world and virtual world, which is virtual world is nothing but my metaverse. So keeping the concept of the, the blockchain, what is blockchain? Blockchain is nothing but the technology which will permit your transactions to be gathered into a blocks and recorded. Okay, so that means you are uh, doing your transaction in the form of some block, which each and every block will be consisting of a lot of information. And they are basically cryptographically chained. That means uh, when you transact your system, it is very difficult to break that even by any hackers. Why? Because it is cryptic. That means a lot of coding would be there. Encrypt will be taking place. So cryptographically chained blocks in the chronological order and it will allow the resulting ledger to be accessed by different servers. So if you look at the, the, the block, each and every block is connected by the hash. This hash is nothing but a certain kind of crypting uh, technique by which the information only can be appended but cannot be deleted. And if you wanted to capture that, lot of uh, other uh, consensus algorithm will be playing the role to give the, the permission to extract that information to you. So this is a blockchain concept. It is a distributed ledger technology. So this is the routing network, routing network for this blockchain. And technologically, if we see that it is basically a distributed database, which is a public but safe public ledger. You can insert, select data, but cannot update or delete data. So this is the point where blockchain database or distributed database is different from the, the existing database. So you basically distributed computer, you can say, and each and every computer has got brain. So we can say that the distributed brain execute the, the digital contracts and it is based on peer-to-peer -peer network technology or cryptology. This cryptology, if you can convert into cognitive intelligence, will be called as a quantum cryptography. So whenever people work with the quantum computing, they also can take part in the metaverse by contributing that the quantum cryptography counterpart by doing that the how that the message can be transferred from one state to another state or one human brain to another human brain. <clears throat> so this is my uh, say this is the concept where I try to bring that the what is a distributed ledger. This is a bank. You have a lot of clients. This is a centralized ledger. That means each and every client has to come to the bank and then only they can get the, the transaction. But there is no communication between client A and client C. So therefore, there are multiple ledgers, but bank holds the golden record so that the client B must reconcile its own ledger against that of the, the bank. Okay, seen uh, like that, every uh, client will be dealing with the, the bank. But if you go to the, the distributed ledger, each and every node, they are connected. So even if you try to do something, it will be connected by the other information. So there is only one ledger. All nodes have done some level of access to that ledger and all nodes will agree to a protocol that will determine that the true state. If you do not agree, then automatically no node will be able to access that. That is why in distributed ledger system, you cannot delete or you cannot update that information because nobody will give the permission to you. So you have to have some kind of consensus algorithm for maintaining that the distributed ledger. If you look at that, this is a PC, web technology, mobile internet, and this is the now we are working here. Okay, we are existing here, but sooner or later we will be shifting to this metaverse and we'll be having all the wearable devices. Without this device, we cannot have any kind of metaverse. So that means whenever we will be uh, in your room, if you wanted to do something, you have to add this headset or you have to have this haptic gloves, anything we can do that by using that. So therefore, the blockchain technology, when we'll be giving to this digital world, this is a physical internet system. And uh, this, you see that the satellite network, so that means we would like to have lot many satellites in our physical universe. 
And yeah. those satellites will create some virtual satellite, which will be called as a virtual universe, and they will be interconnected to give you the, the, the a digital system like this. So this is called the, the digital twin internet system ITS model. <clears throat> so all these things, it will be working fine when we try to implement the, the cognitive intelligence in human-centric functional modeling. What is that basically? It will be discussed that we, how a cognitive intelligence will bring the, the human eye. That means it is a 3D platform of various actions of humans as a function. Okay, so this will be our future shape of the metaverse. That means in the future shape of the metaverse, we'll be implementing these human-centric functional models that will be formed using some cognitive intelligence. If you look at here, that we wanted to know that the one state transition uh, transition from one state to another state. So if that states are nothing but the functional block of a human brain, so we can define this HCFM is as a model of human perception, which will explain the system to have a set of observable function phi i, via which the change in functional state from P to Q. This is simple that I am changing from P to Q. State maybe say thermodynamically, if I define the state, I can define that the P is nothing but the pressure, chair, temperature, and volume, huh? and maybe that the entropy. So this particular system is having this parameter. They are changing to another system where we would like to see that the how that the entropy changes. Similarly, this is be a function block which will be mapped to the, the Q. That means when we are trying to change from P to Q, I am mapping a function. This function will be a human function. And therefore, we can say the metaverse can be taken as a functional state space transverse traversed by the consciousness and cognition of the universe. So until and unless you have self-consciousness, your cognition will not work. And if cognition does not work, the transposition may not be possible. So therefore, when you are moving from one point to another point by this technique, we'll basically developing a network and that is nothing but the graph because graph is basically a network and using this network concept, we are mapping that the cognitive functional state space by a directed graph with nodes. The nodes will represent the functional states and the nodes, they are joined by edges and these edges will represent the reasoning processes via which the transition will take place from one state to another. So that means your one concept will be transferred to the another concept of the another human brain only by this human-centric functional modeling. So therefore, this is a very important concept for doing that. You can map that the cat, how does it look like in a 3D? A dog, how does it look like? So if the cat tries to discuss with something with the, the dog, to do some activity, how they will map from graph is a very interesting process. So you see that this is the 3D in a virtual reality mode is having the headset and this is the six degree of freedom. So in case of the reality, we have the, the only three degree of freedom because X, Y, Z and some kind of rotation. But in case of the, the virtual reality, you may have the, the six degree of freedom. Okay. This concept of six degree of freedom is a momentum concept. Whereas 3D is a coordinate concept because why momentum? Because you have a rotation and you have that the momentum changes. That means Vx, Vy, Vz also will be there. Velocity will be there because until and unless you map the, the velocity, you cannot go for the, the action uh, token. Okay. So these are the, the some metaverse devices. As I was telling, this is the Oculus Rift that is via the, the headset. This is the Oculus Quest. The moment you uh, where this wearable device, you will be able to ship to that. And this is a lens which Microsoft has devised, HoloLens, we call. And with the help of that, we have the, the virtual reality kit. So you can do many of the observations. So if you try to do some chemistry experiment at the laboratory, you add this wearable device and you will always see that the whole, which experiment you are seeing and how they look like, what action internally it is taking place, everything you will be able to see. But in a today's laboratory, if we do some chemical reactions, we know only that the reaction by changing the, the color or without something. So therefore, uh, sometimes may not be possible to understand what a complicated reaction, but in this case, we may be able to 
pinpoint that exactly at the micro level. Similarly, this is the human who is uh, wearing this glass and seeing that the virtual world, how does it look like? Same way you have the, 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 your hand, this is the haptic gloves and this is the body suit. And when you have a haptic gloves, so everything information will be knowing here with the help of the haptic gloves, a lot of medical surgery can be taking place from one point to another point in a virtual mode. Similarly, as a body suit, if you take, you can go to the very uh, dangerous space without harming your body itself. So this way, you see that the people are taking their uh, seeing or experience in the learning, the metaverse, in the some school of communication, and they are communicating with each other. Uh, and what they are communicating, once you have a voice recognition, you will find it out that the, his brain and her brain will be, both the brains are working together. They are communicating with the help of these particular devices. Okay. Today only we are wearing not this one, but we are wearing the mask, but we are not able to communicate. So such kind of things also will come. And this is the realistic experiment on the heart. Students in the life science class with the help of the, the headset is able to see that the, how the, the function of the heart can take place. So all these biological activity or complicated activities can be brought back to a screen with the help of the, the virtual world, which is nothing but the metaverse. So with that help, I want to conclude that. We discussed about the, the simple concept of metaverse. A lot many things are required to be done. These are simple glimpses of the, the, the introduction that the, what could be the, the, our near future computation. And we are transforming ourselves from physical world to the, the digital world. We showed some of the device by which we can visualize about the metaverse. And future will be on the toe of metaverse. And let us look at the, the future. Thank you very much. Thank you, Professor Roberto, for giving this simple concept. Well, uh, it has been a real, a real, a lovely presentation, Professor. Thank you very much indeed. And I hope that uh, well, we are going to meet each other soon. And uh, well, I have learned a lot. And uh, I think many people are going to learn a lot from your talk. And uh, please uh, do pass on to your family and beloved people all my love and affection. And you please uh, do take care, my professor. Ah, sure, sure, sir. And don't forget that you are one of my closest friends. So, yeah, yeah, sure, sure. So we are in touch with always, and then uh, new things, whatever will come to mind, definitely I will hook up you. <laughs> yeah, thank you very much indeed. Goodbye, professor. Thank you very much once again. Yeah. Bye. Yeah, yeah. Bye, bye bye. I'll send you the link soon. Okay, bye. sir. Okay, okay, okay. Welcome. Okay.